All right then, welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question. Johnny and ancient computer. I'll quickly summarize the question for you. So this Johnny uh, has found some broken computer and that computer has only one register with a value uh, which is positive, greater than equals to one. And there's this operation defined. Uh, the operation is uh, multiply, multiply by two, four or eight or uh, divide by two, four or eight. It's just when you divide the number, uh, it should be divisible by that. So if you divide it by two, four, eight, it should be divisible by two, four or eight respectively. So there is this register with a value, some operation like some operations are defined and uh, what we want to find out is uh, initially uh, this register holds a value A and we want to convert this value to B, right? So this guy wants to know how many operations he needs to perform. If he puts A in the register and wants to get B at the end, right? So what are the operations? Uh, these are the type of operations he has, right? So minimize these operations such that this A converts to B, right? What is A? A is a value initially he has greater than equals to 1. Now, the, more concretely, in the input, we are just given two integers which are actually positive, uh, positive, so greater than equals to 1 and the output, you have to print the minimum number of operations to convert this A to B, right? So, what are the operations? Either multiply by 2, multiply by 4, multiply by 8 or uh, divide by 2, divide by 4, divide by 8, but just make sure when you perform division, the number should be divisible by that number and sometimes it can happen that... Uh, this A cannot be converted to B, then in that case, so you can just print minus 1. That's what they've asked here. Having a quick look at the constraints, if you see here, it's 10 by 18 here and uh, test case is also 1000. So, of course, it gives you a hint uh, that uh, there will be some constant time operation or a logarithmic operation required here because how do you approach this question then? Uh, what we want is we want uh, A to be equal to B, right? After some time, A should be equal to B. Now, what is the nature of our operation? So, how does our uh, operation look like? So, can just uh, write the nature of operations in hand. So our operations are in such, we can multiply by 2. We can multiply by 4 or in other words, we can multiply by 2 square or we can multiply by 2 cube or we can divide by 2. Of course, if it is divisible by 2, we can divide by 4. Of course, it is divisible by 4 or we can divide by 8, uh, which is, of course, the number should be divisible by 8. Now, looking at this operations, uh, one thing that you can observe, right? So if you see uh, A's prime factorization, I don't know how A's prime factorization looks, but it will be something like this, right? 2 power x into 3 power y into 5 power w, so on, right? You want to convert A to B using these operations, right? But looking at these operations, uh, they only affect 2's power, right? You apply any operation, it's only going to affect 2's power. In other words, if in B, so if I write B's prime factorization here and let's say this is some 2 power x dash into 3 power y dash into 5 power w dash, so on. If in B, this portion is different from this portion, you can never convert A to B. Why? Because the operations that you have cannot change any other power in the prime factorization except 2's, right? So this thing is like very clear cut observation that uh, Let's just call this uh, remaining portion apart from 2's power uh, to be Ra and this to be Rb, right? So, if the remaining portion in A and B is different, is different, you can never convert A to B. Why? Because you don't have any operation which can affect these things, right? So, that thing is obvious. So, one observation is very clear cut here that uh, if the remaining portion in both of them, what is the remaining portion apart from a 2's power in both the numbers? is not equal, then our answer is minus 1. You can never get it, right? So, yeah, 2's power, we can of course get it, right? So, like, if you want to match 2's uh, power, you can always do it, right? So, let's just see how can we do it. But this is clear. If the remaining portion uh, is not matching, you can never get it because you don't have any operation which can change it. Fine. So, let's just see the case uh, where we have something like this, where we have Ra equals to Rb. That is, the remaining portion is same. Right, so this portion is same. So now anyway, we don't have to do anything with it. Now all that remains is uh, what we have effectively is uh, we have two power x in A, and uh, so let's just call it. There is two power power of two in uh, A is x, and a power of two in B. Let's just call it uh, y. So now effectively, what remains is you want to convert this x to y. Right, the problem is reduced when the remaining portion is equal to the power of two in A is two power x. Uh, like there is 2 power x in A, you want to convert it to 2 power y, right? Or in other words, uh, convert this x to y, make them equal. Now, what can be the possible cases for x and y? Uh, one case is uh, x is equal to y. 
the power of 2 is same the remaining portion is same your answer is simply 0 right you don't need to do any operation in other words a and b are equal okay or the case can be x can be less than y if x is less than y that means power of 2 in a is less so in this case you will of course you will use multiply operation right so multiply by 2 multiply by 2 square or multiply by 2 cube right so if x is less than y of course we will have to do it in other words uh, in one operation you will either be able to increment the power like this power of 2 uh, in a by 1 or by 2 or by 3 right so when you multiply it by 2 you can increase this x by 1 multiply by 2 square you can increase this x by 2 or multiply by 2 cube you can increase this x by 3 fine so that's one thing or the other case can be when x is greater than y if x is greater than y of course you will have to use this operations divide by 2 divide by 2 square or divide by 2 cube and in this case uh, again uh, the operations effectively what you have is you can either decrease x by 1 in one operation or decrease x by 2 in one operation or decrease x by 3 in one operation so in other words effectively uh, what you are trying to achieve here is uh, you are effectively trying to achieve uh, that the difference between x and y so the difference between x and y should be actually turned into zero so like if you call this guy delta you are trying to make this delta to be equals to zero and uh, what you have is uh, in one operation either you can increase x by one or decrease x by one you can either increase x by two or decrease x by two you can either increase x by three or uh, decrease x by three of course in these cases uh, it should be divisible but that's fine so this is what we have okay so I want to give an example here, uh, it will be clear if there is any doubt. Uh, let's just say uh, the difference between x and y right now is 6. Uh, 6 or uh, like if you can consider the case, you have 2 power 0 and 2 power 6. So the difference between them is 6. Now, like this can be A, uh, uh, this can be A or B or this can be B or A, it doesn't really matter. The point is, right now the difference between these two powers uh, is 6, right? And you want to make it 0 and these operations you have. So what you have is effectively, uh, the reduction factors like in one operation how much you can reduce a power so if i want to call that reduction factor so there is not standard terminology here i'm just calling it reduction factor for this question you have uh, is one two or three reduction factor in the sense uh, the reduction factor for this difference right because any there is some difference here right if you are in this case there is some difference between these two powers now what are the reduction factors that is in one operation how much can you reduce this difference Right, because right now the difference is greater than 0 but you want to reduce it what are the reduction factors you have 1 2 or 3 either uh, like when you use these two operations you will you will be able to reduce the, the difference by 1 for obvious reasons if you use these two operations uh, you, will be able to, you will be able to reduce the difference by 2 if you use uh, these operations you will be able to reduce the difference by 3 obviously right so let's take an example here so right now you can see the delta is actually 6 if i want to show you if you just use uh, these type of operations, that is uh, operations of uh, like by multiplying by 2 or dividing by 2, how many operations will be consumed? In one operation, you can only um, reduce the difference by 1. So, the total number of operations will be 6 divided by 1, 6 operations. And it makes sense, right? So, you can either like, if this is the A, you can multiply it by 2, 6 number of times. Or if uh, this is A, you can divide it by 2, 6 number of times. Fine. So, what if uh, you use the type 2 operation then it will be 6 divided by 2 right so it will be 3 operations again obvious you can multiply by 4 uh, uh, you can multiply by 4 here uh, 3 times right so then it will reach 2 power 6 or in other words 2 power 2 into 2 power 2 uh, into 2 power 2 3 times so it will be 2 power 6 or the third operation is you can just do 6 by 3 uh, then it will be what 2 operations simple so you can multiply it by 8 2 times that is 2 power 3 into 2 power 3 or vice versa right divided by 2 power 3 2 times right so uh, that's that uh, the question is now summarized to you have a difference which is greater than zero you want to make it uh, zero and these are the reduction factors you have if you use this type of operation or uh, these many operations will be consumed if you use these many operation uh, like this reduction factor these many operations will be consumed and if you use this uh, this will be the reduction factor of course i'm under assumption that uh, the difference is divisible by this one two and three but if it is not we'll see but the important uh, point uh, that you should drive home here is uh, you want to minimize the operations right in the end uh, we want to minimize the number of total number of operations if you want to minimize the total number of operations uh, where should you look you should look at this three right this reduction factor if you use this type of uh, reduction factor that is you use either plus three or minus three 
for multiplying by 2 power 3 or divided by 2 power 3 operations, you will consume least number of operations, right? So, to minimize the number of operations, uh, in ideal case, you should divide this difference. So, let me just call this delta. You should divide this difference by 3, right? Because in one operation, this gives you maximum number of reduction, right? By 3, right? And it's obvious that if you divide a number by 3, it, uh, it will be a very less number compared to when you divide a number 1 or 2. So, this is the ideal case, right? If the difference is divisible by 3, you do it. The delta, delta divided by 3 number of operations will be consumed here, right? So, here, this is the example. But if it is not, no problem. Try to bring it as close as possible, right? Because after some point, uh, you won't be able to apply these many number of operations. For example, if this was 7, uh, you wouldn't be able to apply uh, 3 operations. Like, you wouldn't be able to apply 2 operations, right? Uh, if you try to apply one more operation, so for example, what I'm going to say here is, guys, if instead of 2 past 6, there is 2 past 7 here, you won't be able to do it in uh, 2 operations because then 2 power 0 till 2 power 6 will be to go. But uh, if you try to do one more operation of type this, your total number will become 2 power uh, 9, but that you don't want it, right? But still, try to bring it as close as possible. So bring it till 2 power 6, 2 power 0, 2 power 6, and then just perform one of the operation, right? So this one operation. Right. So, my point is try to apply this operation as much as possible. So, apply delta divided by 3 number of operations. Right. And now, what can happen is uh, there can be 3 cases when you apply this. One case is simple uh, if you have uh, to be exactly divisible by it, then this will happen. Uh, this will happen. Right. So, you will be able to, uh, like, there will be no remainder. So, the total number of operations consumed will be delta divided by 3. But what if uh, the remainder is not 0? The remainder is not 0, then there will be the remainder will be what the remainder will be uh, either one or the remainder will be either two right so if you want to take an example here let's just take an example so if you do seven by three the remainder is one here right so what you do is uh, you apply seven by three which is two number of this type uh, like this plus three or minus three type of operation and just apply one operation of this with this reduction factor all in all you just have to add one to it or when the remainder is 2 then. So, this is the case for let us say 8. So, 8 divided by 3. You can go as close as again 8 divided by 3 is 2. So, you can make it like here 2 power 6, right. You can make it here 2 power 6. Uh, just do one more operation of this, right, the, with the reduction factor of 2, right. So, again just one operation, right. So, yeah, I mean that is about the question. If the difference between these two powers is divisible by 3, this is your answer. If it is not, Try to reduce as much as much as possible with the reduction factor 3, right. So, you'll go as close as possible. So, delta divided by 3 number of operations will be consumed. And after that, uh, some remainder will be remaining, either 1 or 2. If 1 remains, you will use a type 1 operation. If 2 remains, you will use a type 2 operation. Here, job is done. Type 2 or like the, with the reduction factor 2. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the question. So, the implementation is nothing here and that's why I don't think it's feasible for me to code it. What we effectively done is we have found here a... Uh, x that is power of 2 in a and here i have found a power of 2 uh, in b right so this y so yeah and uh, what i have checked is after i have found out so i am also effectively destroying uh, all the powers of 2 in a and all the powers of 2 uh, in b so that's how i count the powers of 2 in a and powers of 2 in b what will remain is uh, now what will remain here is this will be actually remaining portion r a and r b if they are not equal, if the remaining portion is not equal, your answer is simply minus 1. That is obvious, right? And uh, then, if x equals to y, no operation consumed. Otherwise, your answer is delta divided by 3, the difference between these powers divided by 3, plus 1, when there is when the remainder is not 0. If the remainder is 0, delta divided by 3 operations will be consumed. So, this is delta divided by 3. And this is the case uh, when the remainder when the remainder is 1 or 2, you will consume one more operation of reduction factor 1 or reduction factor 2. Let us discuss the time complexity before we end this video. Now, this loop uh, runs for what? It is, we are dividing it by 2, right? So, a becomes a, like start with a, then a by 2, a by 4, so on. So, this will run for log a base 2 number of times. Um, this will run for again log a base 2, like log b base 2. And uh, this all is just a constant time operation, right? So, what we are after is log a base 2 and log b base 2's worst possible values. So, these two's worst possible values can be um, log 10 power 18 base 2, right? Because the worst possible value of a and b can be 10 power 18. 
So if you want to convert this, uh, calculate this, what you can do is you can just divide it by 3 and multiply it by 10, then this 10 actually is nearly equal to 10. So you have all in all 2 power uh, 90 here, 2 power 90 inside. So um, all in all 90 into 2, right? So around 180 uh, is the time complexity in the worst possible case for this loop. So for both of these loops, so all in all, you will not consume more than 90 plus 90, that is 180 number of operation. And the test cases we have are what? So 180 into the test cases we have, I guess, are uh, 10 power, I guess, 3, right? Fine. So the test cases are just 10 power 3. So 180 into 10 power 3. So this is, of course, achievable, right? So this is very well less than 10 power 7. So yeah, I mean, this works. Um, uh, I think this is a very easy question. Uh, I hope you learned something out of this video. I'll see you in the next one.